Hey there, I'm Ryan. Welcome to today's acrylic landscape lesson. All of the tools and materials will be listed in the video description. And if you'd like help with the drawing process, I will have the traceable up over on Patreon along with the reference photo for color matching. If you're interested, check it out. But with that, let's jump into it and have some fun. We're going to begin here today with a one inch flat headed brush. We'll dip the bottom third into a little bit of water to help extend the wet life of our paint. And we'll head over to a palette where we have a cerulean blue, Mars black, titanium white, and a sap green. That said, we're starting in the sky and we'll do so with a very bright pigment. We'll grab a lot of our titanium white, maybe one tenth that in our cerulean blue, and maybe 1 15th that in Mars Black, just because it's such a strong pigment. We'll mix that up so that we don't have any areas that are particularly blue or black, and we'll just fill in the two small spots in the sky. Now we're going to take a few steps back and work on these larger backing trees in the distance. And they're going to have a lot more of a blue hue than they do a green one, simply because of the reflective light in the distance. And so we are going to begin yet again with quite a bit of titanium white. We'll grab about one fourth that in our cerulean blue, mix those two up, but it'll probably be a little bit too bright and a little bit too saturated. So then we'll go with initially, we'll try 1 8th Mars Black. You wanna use as little Mars Black as possible just in the beginning here because it's such a strong pigment. We'll do a little test on the reference photo and it's still a little bit too bright. So we can add another say eighth of the Mars Black. Work that in there. Do another little test. Getting closer, but Whenever we add Mars Black and Titanium White, we desaturate it. So I'll reinterject that saturation via our Cerulean Blue, go for a test, and that is perfect. So now we're going to start covering the majority of our background here, but right around this top area where the trees meet the foliage, we're going to do some detail work, and I'll get you closer up for that. Now up here, we're going to make use of the nice sharp edge that the one inch flat headed brush has, and we'll just create the tops of a couple of trees. We're going to do this before filling in any large areas because it's easier to craft sharper lines and precise applications when you have a lot of new wet pigment on your brush. Also, we'll have a larger tree right here, and larger trees will still show some branches. So I'll just work those out to the left and right with a little bit of an angle. We're essentially just working with silhouettes at this point, so it doesn't need to be anything too complicated, and it's rather far away, so you're not going to see a massive amount of detail. All of that will come later when we're working on the pieces in the foreground. But with that, here you can see we're just creating a nice top to it. Some good detail. You can work in additional detail with your liner brush if you'd like, but you don't want to overdo it because it is quite far away. And then once that's done, we can do some larger strokes. With that, yet again, we'll pull back and we'll just start working in this larger backing area. I'm not going to be too worried about overlapping trees in the foreground or even our trunks, because we can always just go ahead and redraw those on. And it'll be a lot easier to layer our mid-ground and foreground trees over top our background than it would be working our background around our mid-ground and foreground trees. So we're just trying to get some good coverage here. We're going to work a bit in an X-shaped pattern. That way the pigment doesn't only move left or right, but also up and down. Getting a nice thick application, going over our first areas. Very good. And with that, I think we'll switch brushes and clean up the top together. 
From there, we'll switch to a nice little liner brush, and this is great because it has a very fine, sharp tip, not too many bristles, and this will help us render all of the details the one inch brush couldn't. So with that, I'm actually just going to grab more of that same pigment, make sure that we don't have too much, and make sure that your brush is damp so that you get those really nice clean markings. But we can create all of those little protruding branches to the vertical markings that we made previously. And we can extend some. The goal here is to make sure that they don't all have the exact same height. So you can see that these come down and that the branches aren't all exactly the same on all of them. Creating diversity in your trees is really what's going to make the piece look realistic in the end. And shouldn't be too difficult. With that, here we have individual branches, which will have individual little pieces that come off. Make it a lot, a lot more captivating. Just like so. We have quite a bit of water on our brush, which is making our markings semi-transparent, but that's actually not a bad thing, especially up here. Gives it a bit of a diffused look, all of the lighting. The smaller the subject is, the more of the light that kind of wraps around it. There we go. So now our next step is to add some detail into all of this. We're going to do so by starting to create a slightly darker variant of what we currently have. And this mixture is going to be for the bottom. We'll work our way upwards, have it dissipate. And we essentially want that bottom portion to be darker because it's farther away from the openings in the trees and the light, so it'll naturally have more shadows on it. I'm just slowly working in little bits of additional Mars black, but I don't want to desaturate it to a great amount, so I'll also re-interject a, about half of what we did in Mars black in Cerulean blue, just like so. Then we're going to switch over to a brand new brush, at least for this session. It is going to be the half inch flat headed brush, but with stiff bristles. Now, what's really interesting about this is you peel back all of those bristles so that you get something that's very disheveled and it can create a very randomized tapping effect. Great for foliage in the real distance. So with that, we're going to take that brush and we're going to press it into our new mixture very softly. We don't want much paint on it because the more paint it has, the more it'll condense our bristles, which is not something we want to do. We want to create as small a marking as possible. We'll go into the bottom and using a tapping effect, we'll start applying. I'm going to be rotating my brush in the air exclusively. So there's a lot of rotation going on here, but all of it is happening when the brush is not on the canvas. And we're doing that very specifically so that we don't create streaks, but so that every tap is different from the one next to it. This is going to create a lot of implied distant foliage. You can see that I like to apply it at the bottom to begin. I work my way up. And as that pigment dissipates, I get higher and higher. This creates a very natural textured gradient. So it's darker and then it gets lighter, but we still have something interesting going on in these higher points. I'm going to go back and do this a couple of times, though we do have to be careful in the bottom that we don't add too, too much because eventually you can lose the lighter blue that's showing through and then you lose a lot of that nice texture. So if you find that you have to go back and do this a great number of times, you can take off that initial pigment on a separate canvas, a painting cloth, paper towel, anything of that nature. But I essentially just want a very small amount of texture all the way throughout these trees. Here we have a nice, really close look at the process. You can see that each tap really isn't doing much because the pigment is still quite similar, but that's exactly what we want. We want a very incremental change and we want it to, again, lessen the higher up we go. At this point, I'm making almost no difference, but 
that's how subtle we want it to be. Now, we need some diversity. So, we're going to remix more of the pigment that we already have, and that's generally something that takes a little while to get used to, but after you've done a couple of paintings and worked with similar colors, it can get pretty easy, so we remixed to that without too much trouble. And I always try to keep a little bit of my past pigment to the side of my palette just so I can remix to it and have something that's a very good visual aid, even something to grab from, maybe. But with that, once I have said pigment, we are yet again going to go darker. So more Mars Black, but we're also going to interject the smallest tint of our green. This is sap green. You can also use a golden green, but this is probably one thirteenth. Really not all that much. I'm going to grab a little bit more, slowly interject it. I don't actually want a green. I want something more so in between the two, and I want it to be a little bit darker. So here's the initial blue, and I think that works well for our next application, though we are applying it with our half inch flat headed brush. We are starting yet again at the very bottom, tapping that pigment on, rotating that brush, and I want this to get larger towards the left hand side. So you can see I started there and then I worked my way up. This can be for trees that are a little bit closer to us than the rest of them. But again, darker because it's farther away from the light. The closer we get to the foreground, the farther we are from that. You can see that I have some bristles that I'm losing on the canvas. Generally, that's best to take off by using the brush once it doesn't have any paint. If you use your fingers, you can accidentally move oils onto the canvas. You don't really want to. With that, yet again, here we are, up close, just continuing to create that really nice effect and draw the eye this way. It's okay to have some openings that are brighter than others. That isn't bad diversity. And I'll just splash this a little bit throughout once I have next to no paint on my brush. Now we'll do one more quick layer with additional green and additional Mars Black. Not too much of a change, though I am going to leave the past pigment to the right. So yet again, we can see that progression and even note that they will look good together on the actual canvas. So we'll put that down, pick up our previous brush, grab a little bit of it, maybe take off some if you feel you accidentally grabbed too much, as I admittedly did right there. Start at the bottom. And the more layers you do like this, generally the more interesting it'll become. I think I'll be quite happy with this, considering we're going to add a lot to the mid-ground and the foreground. But this is our general process for building up that subtle backing texture and detail. Also, I have a little too much paint on my brush right now, so I'm going to take that off. But with some excess, I think I'll have a slight hint of a higher tree that has a branch protruding here. Just like that. It'll give it some extra dimension later on. And it makes this open area a little bit more interesting. Now we're going to start working with two new colors that includes a Naples yellow and a burnt sienna. These two are going to be the warmer hues which contribute to a lot of the oranges in the painting, but we do need hints of them in the background here so that this is cohesive with everything else we do later on. So I'm going to grab a good amount of our Naples yellow, an equal mixture of our burnt sienna, and we'll mix those two up quite well. You'll see that the Naples yellow 
takes a bit of a priority as it's a lot of a more thick pigment. So if you want a orange, we just work in more of that burnt sienna, but right now we're not going for anything even close to this bright. So I'm actually going to do the most unintuitive thing, which is grab some titanium white, which will brighten it, but what we're actually doing with this is thickening the pigment. Titanium white is a very thick acrylic, and so it'll help our color stand out over a darker backdrop, but we do need to make this darker. We need to make it fit in with everything we have here. So an easy way of going about that is actually just grabbing or mixing into our previous color. So here you can see I'm working that into our bluish green, and now we have a real transition from all of them. I like what we have in the middle, so I'll put that down. I'll grab our half inch flat headed brush, grab some of that new pigment, and we'll go in with some taps rendering a really, really nice subtle highlight. I'll do a couple more taps from this distance, and then I'll move you in closer to see how we're working the brush and all of that. There we go. Now, I don't actually want to do too, too much of this. Its primary purpose is, again, to ensure that later on the background feels natural with the foreground. So I'll just tap it in a couple of spots, really let the pigment dissipate on the canvas. And in one or two primary spots, and this is one that I've decided, I'll go over that area a couple of times and just build it up a little bit. That way it looks like some trees are closer, others are farther, and it's all very nebulous at this point because it is far away, we're not seeing the detail, it's a lot of trees kind of combining visually. But we do want to keep that darker movement that we initially had. That said, I think this is looking really natural and really nice for as far as we are. Now we're going to start working on the larger trees that we can see in the background there, and I'm going to be using another half inch flat headed brush. However, this one is softer bristles, which would be great for rendering those sharper markings rather than the more splattered textured look. So we'll use that, and if we need to go smaller, we can go back to our liner brush. So we'll begin with the process by making sure that our brush is nice and damp, then we'll create a slightly darker backing for each of the trees and then build a brighter highlight on top of it. With that, we'll start with a little bit of Mars Black and a clean spot in our palette. You can see that I've cleaned most of it with the exception of a little line so that I still had our previous colors should we want them. I'll go in with about an equal mixture of Titanium White to Mars Black. That'll create a fairly neutral but slightly darker gray, just because the Mars Black is quite a bit stronger than the Titanium White. And then we'll grab about maybe one-fifth that in Cerulean Blue, so that it works with our previous hues. Then we can head in here, and I'm just looking on the reference photo. You can redraw this in if you want to, but I think I'm confident enough that we can just start making that application. And as you can see, I don't make one singular stroke. I like to make multiple. This gives us nice little natural movements within the tree and makes it look a lot more realistic in the end. Otherwise, if you did a single stroke, it can look very soft on the sides and it can have a very irregular, unnatural blend or a bend to it. So, different things to consider, but we do want to make it look unique. Here we'll go in with another one. Bit of a tap and drag. This one isn't going to go up as high as that, and these are going to get lost into the brighter areas up here, but that'll happen a little bit later. Next, we have a tree that gets lost behind this darker foliage, and then it gets lost behind foliage up here. And then to our right, we have a slightly larger one, so I'm going to apply more pressure with my brush 
That'll expand my bristles and create a marking which is bigger than the others. I will go over to this one and do that as well. And this is going to create some very early depth with the trees getting smaller as they move into the distance. So that one we won't go over again at all. And with that, I will add quite a bit of titanium white to our previous mixture. Maybe one fifth that again in cerulean blue. Do a little test. And that's actually fantastic. So, with that, we'll start at the top. And I'm going to apply this predominantly towards the right hand side and middle, assuming that the light is moving this way. So, we want the brightest area to be on the right, and then it can dissipate as it moves towards the left, creating a very soft and natural gradient. Go back, grab more. Going to go over this again, build it up. Because we were working on a wet, darker pigment, our brighter pigment looked a bit more muted, and the more layers we add to it, the less muted it will look. I'm also going to drag it up farther, and again have it get lost in our higher foliage. There we go. Also applying slightly more pressure on this. Let's get you a little bit closer for some of the detail work and the liner brush. So as we get closer, we do switch to the smaller liner brush. I'm going to take some extra titanium white, work that into our previous mixture, and we'll just slowly build up our hues. Again, working this on that right hand side, applying very little pressure initially just so that I have as much control as possible. And I don't have that much water on my brush right now, very specifically, so that I can get more of a textured application. The water normally smooths out your pigments so you get a nice soft look, but with these trees I actually want a bit of texture because it'll look quite natural for the actual subject. You might also want to do this with various rocks. And we're just slowly brightening them. You can really see the difference between the ones done on the left hand side and the right hand side. There we go. have quite a bit of pigment on this. So I'm just going to take some of it off on our primary trees. Then as it runs out, we can move over here. Now that texture really comes through. A little bit of finger painting can also be a wonderful thing. So here we have a bit of a wide shot and admittedly it is looking a little bit rough but we have a lot of layering to do in the process and this is just generally how working with acrylics work. With that said, at this point we essentially have all of our foliage behind these trees and we need to put some in front of it so that it all makes sense, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my liner brush and we're going to recreate some of the brighter pigments that we had back here. So we'll grab 
some of our Naples yellow, even mixture of our sap green, about an even mixture of our titanium white, one third that in Mars black, and you can see I'm just taking off the excess. Work that in there. And then we also want a hint of blue and a hint of sap green, as we did previously incorporate both to ensure that we weren't at a true orange yet. So now we'll just go into the previous areas and we can tap that on top of our trees where they were previously prominent. We're not going to do too much with it, but we just need to show that these trees dimensionally are three-dimensional and they have foliage both in front of and behind them. And this is a prominent pigment because we haven't used it much and it'll be a little bit more visually notable than the blues and the green. There we go. Grab a little bit more. Again, we'll end up covering up a lot of this later on, but certainly a good start. Lots of little taps here, trying to make them as small as I possibly can because this is all rather far away. And we can also create a little bit of a blue mix, bluish gray, rather something very similar to what we have back there with a hint of green. And this can really be just any variation of that. And we can work some of it on top of our trees as well. So we have that added diversity. We can show these getting lost behind a lot of it. We want to spread it out though because these taps, this texture will be different from the previously applied texture and so it will be more visually notable. Again, we'll cover up a lot of it when we work on this tree and those, but by doing a good job here, we give ourselves more option later on in that cover up process. We won't have to cover up everything, we can leave more option on the table. There we go. Again, acrylics are so much about layering. Next we're going to be moving back to the one inch flat headed brush and we'll be working on the silhouette for all of the foliage that we have in the mid ground and foreground. So you can see all of these protruding branches. That is something we want to start covering. We can do that to the tree over here on the right as well because that'll be using the same palette. But we want a nice darker base that we can build all of these really subtle beautiful colors on top of. So we'll use that because it can carry a lot of paint and let's jump back into the mix. So for our mix, we're going to be using quite a bit of our Mars Black, about an equal amount of our Sap Green, though it will still look incredibly dark. We will need Titanium White to bring out that green. That said, before we grab it, we are going to grab about one half that in our Cerulean Blue, and now we'll grab about two-fifths that in titanium white, brightening it up a little bit, and now you can kind of see just a little bit of that green coming through. We can add an additional green, we can add an additional blue, but we want this to be a really nice dark pigment that can still get darker, but has hints of our green and our blue. There we go. I think that'll be just right. Move that around just so you can see it in different lighting. And for the beginning here, I'm going to start on the tree to the right. Much like the trees in the back, 
We'll do the beginning of our detail work with the one inch because it can just cover so much more space, but we'll go back in and do the actual details a little bit later with the liner brush. So here, as you can see, we're starting off by defining the top of this. Lots of little offshoots that move out in all of these different directions. And then as we start to move down, those offshoots can become significantly more prevalent, really dipping in and out of this space. And I'm not just doing a drag, I'm doing a lot of a tapping motion, though I did almost just run out of paint, and so me continuing to work those edges becomes more and more difficult. So instead, I'll just use the remainder of my paint, what's a little bit higher up on the brush, to fill in this larger negative space. And I'm not going to drag it far to the point where I'm ripping paint off of other areas. I want it all to be nice and thick. So I'm also not applying much pressure with the actual brush. And that said, here we're just grabbing some water, wiping off the excess. And at the top of a tree, branches are quite light, so they tend to move upwards, right? We have a little bit of a bell effect. But as they get larger, as you move farther down the tree, they get heavier. And they start to move up to a lesser degree. So we can start to see that impact already right here. We'll leave a little bit of space. You want your spacing and intervals between your branches to always be different. And this one is going to have a bit more of a fall to it, but we do want little elements to work their way back up. Again, you can make all of this significantly more sharp and fine with the liner brush, but here's a good example of the amount of detail you can achieve with just the edge and corner of your larger one inch. So with that, you can see how we're overlapping a lot of that background that we talked about, not having to worry about because we were going to paint over quite a bit of it. Quite relieving. Branches are getting larger and larger as we move towards the bottom as they are older and have had more time to get larger. We are still trying to make sure that all of our branches are different. And here is where we essentially start to connect this side to this side. That said, we need significantly more paint, so Mars black, lot of sap green, lot of cerulean blue, half that in titanium white, and there we go. Going to add slightly more titanium white, slightly more blue to this mixture, because this area is a little bit farther away than this tree and the trees that we'll find over here. So to have slightly more of that blue that reflective light, I'm going to tap on the top, rotating my brush, and we'll just work that down behind there. This will make this area sit farther back, feel a bit more subtle, and we can work it up to about that spot, expand it, make sure that we have a nice thick amount of coverage. And now, as we move into here, and I'll just do a couple little splotches for blending's sake, so we get a natural transition. We can add significantly more Mars Black. If we had 100% before, we're adding in an additional 100. This time in Mars Black, I'll fill in the empty spots that we created. I'll work in a bit of an X-shaped pattern, very light brush strokes. You can see my easel though, he's doing a little bit of a dance. 
I'll just bring this down. I know that the camera can't see it, but it really isn't much farther. You can still see my brush coming up there, good. Grab more of that. And work our way up. Being relatively careful around the edge because that is an area that is going to need to be detailed. And we'll have a lot of texture covering all of this, so you don't need the perfect blend between this pigment and this pigment, but if you want one, you can achieve it with very soft brush strokes. The harder you press with your brush, the more you're going to move large amounts of paint to the sides of your brush, and those will create real brush strokes. I'm personally just fine with what we have there. I think it has a nice natural transition. And so, we'll start heading up, at which point we will have some protruding branches. Need to make sure the brush remains relatively damp. I know that the camera's been rather far away for quite some time. That is intentional here. We're just working on a really large area and you want to be able to consistently compare different spots in the painting to ensure that you're making your branches differ from the ones both in its general vicinity but also throughout the rest of the painting. So that's what we're doing there. We need more paint. Mars black, titanium white, green, cerulean blue, but again, more Mars black than anything else right now. And we'll continue moving upwards. I really love this. It's coming along well. Admittedly, not the first time I'm uh, doing this fall lesson. Sometimes it's better to work through paintings that get frustrating or that you just kind of get lost in. And sometimes it's better to just restart, do things with all of that new information that you've gathered from the initial version. And often that can be a whole lot better. I think often uh, teachers and people in painting, they always say, push through it, keep going, keep going, keep going. Eventually you'll get to a place you like, especially with acrylics, because it is just so malleable. And that's true, it is. But sometimes just restarting can also get you there and a lot faster. So with that, we know what we're doing today because we've been down this path before. And often I don't restart these because I get frustrated. It's just because I figure a different way of doing it might be a little bit better and might be doing, might be better for teaching very specifically. Because we all sometimes get used to uh, different little habits in these artistic endeavors and sometimes they're really good and sometimes they're not. But because we have X amount of experience, we can kind of get away with it and still get a great result. But it isn't necessarily the way it should be done. And I find often I go back and redo these just so that I can give you that proper foundation the way you're doing it correctly from the beginning. There we go. Just trying to make sure we have a nice thick application. You can go back and add a second application to all of this should you want to. I'm going to do so right now. But once that's done, we can move on to the next step. Now we're going to get a little bit closer, make sure that our canvas is fully dry, and we'll switch to the one inch flat headed brush for some blending. With that, we want to continue some of those brighter highlights that we started creating in the background, but we'll continue to brighten them and move them forward. So with that, we'll grab some of our Naples yellow, and you can see that I left a strip of our initial mixes. We're going to aim for what we previously had right there, 
but we'll make it a little bit brighter. So, even mixture of our Naples yellow and our burnt sienna, of course the Naples yellow takes over. Then we'll add in about a fifth of that sap green just to start, and a fifth of that in our cerulean blue. The cerulean blue and the Naples yellow will mix to make more of a green, further complementing the sap green, but keeping it all relatively warm. We'll thicken the pigment and brighten it with maybe one-fifth titanium white. I feel like one-fifth is often a fairly safe amount to test with, but we'll go with about one-eighth Mars black. So here you go. We have a significantly brighter variant of what we were previously working with, and we want to work up to something significantly brighter. We don't want to start with it, so I'll we'll just double up that one-eighth of Mars Black and continue throwing that in there until I have something just a little bit brighter than what we were previously working with. And if I feel like I start to desaturate it too much, then we can go back to our sap green, our cerulean, our sienna, and our naples. And that is actually beautiful. That's really nice. Okay, a little test on our reference photo. Looks good. We'll put down the mixing brush. We'll pick up the half inch flat headed brush, which of course has all of the bristles peeled back. Grab not much of this. And we'll go in for those taps, starting at the top, rotating our brush slightly. And then we can work our way down allow it to dissipate, and you want the top to be the brightest and the most notable, because the top is where you're getting a lot of that light, and as you start to move down, of course, that light dissipates, shadow covers it, and we just get something much more subtle. Let's grab a bit more. We have some relatively uniform spots, so I'm going to try to break up those clusters by interjecting new clusters. And we'll have it dissipate very naturally as you move here to the left hand side and upwards. We want there to be greater spacing between our taps as you move through here because we want the backing to be darker, where here it can be lighter because it's farther away, more inset, right? So, good start with that. I like it a lot. I'm going to put our brush down, pick up our one inch, and we'll brighten this as well as add some additional saturation. So, we'll go in with quite a bit of additional titanium white to brighten it, then to saturate it, burnt sienna, and about half that in burnt sienna in our Naples yellow. Give it a test. Applying it on the tops and to the top of different clusters that may pop out and protrude. There we go. Starting to get full of life. Though we do want a good diversity in color, so we will continue our layering process. With that, I think we need something more orange. Add a lot of burnt sienna to the mix. Just like so. A little bit more of that Naples yellow. Brighten it. That is definitely the warmest pigment that we've used yet. The farthest from green. Though it does still have a little bit of green in it. There we go. These are really sticking out or in front. Getting a little quiet while I concentrate. There we are.
We can overlap some of this tree on top of it again. I just wanted to extend that backing area. So very minimal amount of pressure over there. But so far so good. Like that a lot. Now, yet again, brighter, more orange, and we're just slowly moving in this direction. You can see I'm actually moving farther and farther away from the mix so that I don't have to mix with as much paint every time. And now we'll switch to our liner brush so we have additional control. Now with this one, I'm going to be crafting my own branch which will have lots of little tapped foliage on it. Just like so. Trying to make as small a markings as possible. We'll have it come out a bit more. Again, add some diversity in color and sizing as all of these taps will create markings that are larger than what we previously created with the half inch flat brush because we were getting individual bristle markings there where here we are getting a collective of them. There we go. Okay, so far so good. Though I think now we need some depth on that. So I'll just put my brush down, grab the one inch, and I'm actually going to start a new mixture over here just because that already has a lot of different pigment in it. And we'll go about two thirds burnt sienna, one third of our Naples yellow. Yet again, progressively more orange and more saturated. I can apply this on top of that previous branch. Now, in the photo, we have a neat little darker tree right about here. So we'll paint that next and we'll do so with our liner brush. Grabbing a little bit of water, making a nice dark bluish green, equal mixture cerulean blue, sap green, about an equal mixture of Mars black, hint of titanium white, and this should just about do it. Went back to the sap green and cerulean blue, by the way, because I doubled up my Mars black, and so I felt the need to double up the other two, just so that I had more pigment to work with here. With that, the tree goes in between the orange that we have. So I'm going to start by creating the middle portion, and we'll have that work in between parts of our orange, and then we'll have it come out going over said orange, and getting lost up into the foliage above. So we're creating little branches that come out and the branch is going to look quite small when it exits the middle of the tree unless you have foliage that's coming out towards us in which case it'll be extra thick. So I like to just keep it nice and diverse we're painting from a bit farther away so that we can ensure that it looks good with the rest of the painting. We're not over doing anything or underdoing anything for that matter. There we go. One of those things that I wouldn't have thought to include here, but I saw it on the photo and I thought, you know what? That looks really nice. It's a great idea. Very natural looking. And often I find fall paintings end up looking 
the most unrealistic or cartoony when you have multiple trees of different colors and they're very solid and they don't blend together and there's a very unnatural transition between them uh, or at least progression between them. Having transition of color within a singular tree can actually be a great thing for rendering realism when it has both a bit of an orange and a little bit of a green, something we tried to do in the back here and I think worked out quite well. You can have trees that are entirely orange, entirely yellow, uh, reds, all of that, but I, I think the combination of them helps and intertwining them really makes a difference. So this is a great opportunity to do just that. Two different types of trees. Good diversity, making some of these bottom branches larger because they are older, they are weighed down. There we go. Really nice. Little portions showing through. And to make things cohesive, we can have another one that meets over here. Just the slight hint, but that is great. Next, we'll put that down, go back to our one inch. We'll create slightly more of our orange. So, two thirds burnt sienna, one third Naples yellow, one fifth titanium white, one-tenth Mars Black. Put that down. This painting is very much about sequencing and layering, going back and forth between our greens and our oranges. And I think it's all going quite well. We'll have a bit of a tree working its way over this, but as we get closer to us, we want more detail in these applications, more character as well, because we will actually be able to see the individual little pieces of foliage where in the background that wasn't really doable. There we go. And then we can have a little bit more showing through here though we'll probably cover a lot of that with foliage. Now, we do want some of a green bush on the bottom. So, sap green, equal mixture cerulean blue, maybe two-fifths of that, titanium white, and one-fifth that Mars black for the first mixture. We'll see how that turns out. Do a little test. Far too bright for the reference photo. I'm gonna do a little tap here, see if I like it. And I don't think I want anything this blue or saturated in the foreground. We want the foreground to progressively get more saturated, but there are limits, especially on days like this with the very cohesive set of hues. So I'm just making a bit of a darker green. That will be brighter than this, but that won't stand out to a great degree. Sorry, lighter than this. And we'll just go in with a little bit of a tap towards the bottom. That'll do it. Now we have a really good combination of different colors. This is one that definitely fits well here in the foreground. You can do a grass if you want to along the edge, but I think I actually prefer this tapping in this scenario just because this will give us something that's not overly complicated, and the tops of the trees are going to get very complicated. 
That said, we're going to move up a little bit of our texture, allow it to dissipate, rotating my brush, still applying as little pressure as possible, and it's all coming along. Love seeing these things come together. Though, <laughs> this area is still incredibly far from finished. We're just getting started. That said, I am going to layer this over all of our protruding branches. It's amazing how much mileage we've gotten. Out of that pigment. A lot of this is going to get covered up, but we want that texture there. That way we have, again, more option in what we do end up covering up with the later branches. And this is great. Most of you will have to go back to your palette to continue this process. And when you do, just take the excess, wipe it off elsewhere. But it seems we were able to take this out quite far. Now we're going to make our mixture a little bit more green and a little bit brighter. The added green will balance out with the added titanium white, so it shouldn't get any more saturated, but it also shouldn't get desaturated. We'll just do a good healthy mix so that we don't have some areas that are more green than others. Put that down, jump back, and we'll do some of these applications towards the edges because the edges here are the areas that are facing the light and therefore they'll have that real pop, that nice detail. And we can have that dissipate and lessen as we move towards the left-hand side of the painting. Here though, you can see that I intentionally skipped a little bit of a spot. So we have this crevice, this is creating a shadow within that area. Turning out really well. And then we can also pick other little pieces to protrude and catch additional light. We can also grab this and work it very carefully into these smaller branches. Again, you can switch to a fan brush, you can switch to the liner brush. However you feel comfortable rendering all of this minute detail, you just want a randomized application that sits on the tops of your branches or the branches that face the light. So here we're getting light from the top right hand side, but these branches are also having some light on the top of them, maybe not as much as this, because the sky is still above. And we have a lot of middle area here, so you can see that I'm dragging this in and creating these very uneven lines going back and forth. That's also a really great, easy way of creating natural pattern. Showing that we have these branches that don't just move out to the left and right, but they also move forward and exist in a three-dimensional space. Just covering up a lot of it with very soft taps. And now we'll put that down, pick up the smaller liner brush, grab some of that thick pigment, and then we can go towards the edges, clean things up, go on those really dark spots, Expand outwards just a little bit. 
You can also go back with the darker base layer. But this will give you an added element of control which you did not have previously. Allow you to make different areas pop. As you can see I'm further defining a lot of the pieces that work in the middle to continue bringing out that shape. This will also be a great little technique for Christmas trees in about a month. Again with these lessons I always want you to not just pick up what we're doing here and now and recreate this painting but take with you different techniques and ideas that you can incorporate in future paintings. And trees like this are incredibly useful in all seasons. I'm a really really big fan. I think they're very natural looking. They are fun to make. A lot of trees in our past lessons are made with a fan brush. This, no fan brush at all. Though again, you can use it if you'd like to. Wouldn't create a bad effect, but I just wanted to leave it out this time so that you had some additional option. And again, you can take these techniques and incorporate them in other lessons where Maybe I or a different instructor is using a fan brush, but you're not in love with it as a brush. Here we have those options, right? Also, as always, feel free to take artistic liberties. You don't have to follow this lesson and what I'm doing exactly. You're more than welcome to make it your own. Have fun with it or do exactly what I'm doing. Just like to preface that it is an artistic endeavor and it's always nice when we can kind of make these things our own or at least in the very least feel like we have the freedom to. Perhaps you have a great idea for this that isn't in the reference photo and that I'm not incorporating. Don't be afraid to do that. Acrylics are incredibly forgiving if you mess something up dries incredibly quickly, you can cover it up. That's one of the wonderful, wonderful things about acrylics. Such a great medium to try things with and learn from. I'm doing a lot of tapping. I didn't intend to do this much, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm sure you can relate to starting a subject getting going and then you look at the clock and it's just, it's hours later because you're just enjoying yourself. There we go. Really trying to get the tops of these branches and expand them upwards a little bit. Find it gives it a much more natural look. Now, something we could do with the fan brush is make a slightly lighter variant of this, tap it on. It would give a little bit of an almost sparkle to portions of it, almost as if it had just rained and there's a, a wet dew on a lot of the leaves. Don't have to do it, and I'm not going to because I don't want these to pop much. I want the orange leaves in future layers to really pop and I don't want to take away from that, but it is an option, and again, an artistic liberty, should you want to take it. Now we're going to quickly, temporarily, head down here and just start this space to the point where we can later layer on our uh, little gate here. So, with that, we are going to continue this downwards, which means we need to start with the darker, almost silhouetted pigment. Even mixture of cerulean blue, sap green, There we are. So we'll continue this and create those branches that really protrude out over this area. Remember we wanted to cover that up again to a point. 
And as we get down here, we want the actual grassy area, or at least the inclination of it. It's going to be rather dark because we're going to have the shadows of this tree casting down on it. But I'm going to add some extra titanium white and some extra Mars black. It'll give us a bit more of a grayish green. And this will be great for this spot. As you can see, I'm covering up just about all of that gated portion. That's okay. We'll cover up most of this grassy green a little bit later on with it. But this is the easiest way to layer it properly. Also, as you can probably tell, this doesn't exactly blend with that. It's because it's still wet, it's still reflective. I'm very confident that it's the correct color. And that's another thing to consider in the painting process. Sometimes your colors can be a little tricky because if the light's hitting it from a certain angle, it might not look like the color it actually is and your pigments will dry a little bit darker than what they are initially. And in scenarios like this, probably a little less saturated. So I'm just getting that base in there for these branches. We'll let it dry. It'll look like everything else. We can add the highlights on it and it'll be great. But while we wait for all of that to happen, I'm just going to clean my brush really quickly. We're going to head over to this side and start working on a tree trunk. So I'll grab some titanium white. My brush still has some green on it, but that's okay. We're actually going to grab a hint of green and a hint of blue. You want about three times titanium white to Mars black for this first mixture. We want a medium gray that again, inherits the other colors of the painting. We're going to head over here. I'm going to look at the reference photo. Okay, we want it to come up to about this point and get lost. Means it's covering a lot of our orange. This might actually be too bright. I'm going to do a test that is too bright. Okay. More Mars black in the mixture. This is why we test before we apply paint. But we do not worry about it because we are working with acrylics and just like that, it's covered up. Absolutely no worries. Again, so forgiving. And we'll have this get lost underneath a lot of this foliage. We do need this layer to be nice and thick and we are close in the foreground, so we need those edges to be really sharp. So we're using a bit of a watery mixture, which does thin the pigment, meaning that it's difficult to make thick, but it's going to give us the sharpest applications. There we go. And we'll just do some little taps so that it exists underneath some of this foliage, just gives it a bit more of a natural transition. Once we have the larger base, we switch over to the liner brush, make a slightly darker pigment, and we can work this into the back, just like so. And we'll blend it over towards the right but I'm doing so in multiple strokes and patterns. Sometimes it's horizontal, sometimes it's vertical, often it's a mix. And I'm doing that to create the impression of little divots within the tree, areas that the light can kind of get lost behind, but then also catch areas that protrude. Looking to make this really natural, interesting piece of the painting. There we go. Now I'm going to dry my brush. Well, you know what, we'll make a slightly brighter mixture first. So titanium white, there we go. Now I'm going to dry my brush as best I can. We'll grab that pigment. 
Then we'll try to get a bit of a chalky, toothy look. Need to make it a bit brighter. And this will just be to add some extra texture, like what we did in the other backing trees. There we go. Okay. Next to no water on the brush. And you can tell. You don't have to do this, but I do like it as a technique. It can be difficult to control. You may have to go back and clean up some areas, but... I am a fan. Then we just go back and forth for a while until we get the balances that we want. I think that looks very natural. Big fan. We can also use this to create the implication of some in the background as well. Though I wouldn't do too many or exactly what we just did. Otherwise it won't look natural or unique. So we'll just do the hint. Now this is all almost dry. So we can go back to our greens. We were using the same brush, so it's all very convenient. And now, as you can see, we can bring it all together. All fits so well. Though, of course, we did start this process initially with this brush. And so that's how we should do the base here and build on top of it. Again, difficult to control, but that's okay. It can be refined. Or made darker if you do too much. That also isn't tricky. Grab more. There we go. Beautiful. Now, before we start rendering all of our really saturated, beautiful leaves in the foreground, we're going to start working on a myriad of branches in the midground. We'll be doing so with our liner brush, and we might even move to a smaller one of these, depending upon how small we want our branches to be. I have my photo up there, so I'm not going to redraw them on, but if you are up over on Patreon, you will have the traceable, and said traceable will be able to guide you through exactly where all of these are going to be. With that, I'm going to start with quite a bit of Mars Black, maybe one-fifth that titanium white, and we will also use about one-fifth cerulean blue simply so that we can continue to have a cohesive color palette. I'm going to make my brush quite damp to make our markings a lot easier to create. I'm going to look to the top here. And you're going to want to continuously lessen the amount of pressure you apply with your brush as you come out towards the ends of your branches. You want them to get smaller and smaller. I personally like to make my branches in multiple strokes. It makes them more natural to have hard little starts and stops. You could, and I'll show you one, make them through an individual longer stroke but that I think is a whole lot more interesting and the little divots help it substantially. I'm going to go back up to the top of this one and widen that base because again we want it to get smaller and smaller and sometimes if we have a bit of a larger application towards the end, an easy fix for it is to just go back trying to do a lot of this 
from a bit of a distance here. That way we can ensure we're not overdoing it. We want to overlap a lot of our branches. That's going to make it look a whole lot more natural long term. There we go. We have a really large tree right here, which is working in a lot of these. And we'll go back over these portions of the branch a couple of times to make sure it's nice and big. Again, just looking over at my photo. You don't need to rush this. We are painting a lot of branches, but it doesn't have to be done quickly. And if you do take time to think about it, it will end up looking a lot better. That randomized effect is important to a point in making it look natural, but all of your branches are structural pieces that can act as leading lines, deliver the viewer's eye, and have a really positive effect on the painting as a whole if applied in the right areas. And you may, if you're working from the photo and the traceable, you may even want to deviate from it occasionally because while everything there is entirely natural, it doesn't mean it's aesthetically perfect, right? There's a difference between rendering something perfectly and having a perfect image. Because nature may present an overly complicated composition or scene. And being able to recognize that and simplify or complicate different areas is a really big step in becoming an artist. Lots of focusing here. Lots of very small branches. We have some very tiny ones at the top. We apparently have the inclination to use the word very quite frequently. There we go. I'm not sure how many of you are here from the 10 minute painting days. There's a little series that we did on the channel that really got it started actually, where I would try to paint a scene in 10 minutes. Sometimes we were successful, sometimes we weren't, but it was when I was just starting YouTube and <laughs> my vocabulary would not be great because I'd get distracted in the painting process and what we were doing. And something I would say all the time is, with that being said, and we had a little counter that we included for fun at one point, and how many times will I say it in a 10 minute video? And I think the most we ever got was 13. It was uh, after a certain point intentional. It was a lot of fun for everybody who watched the channel and knew that it kind of became this running gag through the videos, but for anyone who was new, it was probably an experience. That said, I've been doing this for almost a decade now. We've gotten a little bit better at it, just like the paintings themselves. Would be fun to go back and do a couple 10 minute paintings though. Just see if that's a skill we still have, or if it's a skill that got better as we just got better at painting. Could be quite interesting. This is coming along really nicely. There we go. Once we have actual
actual leaves on all of these branches will have a very natural piece. Great little rainy scene. Trying to leave some of these openings truly open because I think it's a nice added color and additional element of dimension. But I do want to overlap it slightly so that we do get that extra element of depth. There we go. Okay. Still far from done with our branches. There are a lot of speed paintings on YouTube. There are a lot of, you know, 10 minute sped up tutorials. And it's during these portions that you probably wish you were watching one. And that's okay. <laughs> I, I do try to keep just about everything in here though and ensure that it is all in real time that way. You can paint along if you'd like. We can complete these together. Like a traditional art class. I, I found after leaving university for fine art, something I really missed was that in-studio communal painting experience. Always loved that. You know, we can go to classes for that, or we can make YouTube videos, have a conversation, make some paintings together. I have quite a few painting channels that I really enjoy. I get to sit down and just kind of experience the process with somebody else. And I hope you I hope you feel that, and I hope you get that out of this channel as well. During the beginning of the lessons, I try to be very specific and focused on what we're doing. But, as we get toward the midpoint, I like to make it a little bit more casual. Do have these conversations, and just have some fun together. We have another tree over here. There we go. I think I want to switch to a smaller brush though. We have been using the liner brush. We're going to switch to a smaller liner brush and I'll get you a bit closer. Now, as I previously noted, I am just looking up to the reference photo, copying it as best I can, Sometimes I also print out the traceables and do that. But on the note of these being longer lessons, traceables, I'd like to say a big, big thank you to everybody who is up over on Patreon supporting the channel directly. It is because of you that I am able to make these longer lessons, not worry about the view count or the ad revenue. We don't put ads throughout these videos. There's one at the start, one at the end, but if you've ever watched another two hour plus video on YouTube, you probably notice 20 plus ads all the way throughout. And I find it, it really takes me out of the process. So I always said we wouldn't do that here. And we don't, but we don't have to because of, again, the incredibly generous financial support up on Patreon, this channel is community funded. Big, big thank you to all of you for making lessons like these happen, allowing me to spend time, make something like this, a video like this, that I feel is actually really informative and that we can all be proud of in the end. really couldn't, wouldn't happen without you. feel very 
lucky to be able to teach and paint for a living. Love the experience. And I love getting to see what everybody makes. I know I look at painting as a very fulfilling, cathartic act. And I hope you find that experience as well. Just getting lost in these branches right now. That said, we've uh, we've brought up Patreon and the Tracy Boys and all of that, so if you are new to the channel, you can get the Traceable. So essentially a, a line art version of this, mostly hand-drawn by me, up over on Patreon, along with Traceables for all of the other lessons. You can get the reference photo to download, print off, paint directly on as I do to help with color matching. There are also five of my ebooks, including Acrylics for Beginners, which is essentially the essential. It's everything you need to know about acrylic painting before you jump into it. We talk about glazing, composition, brushes, how much water to use, all of that good stuff. You can find that up there as well as a couple of ebooks full of traceables for those days where you want to create something but you're not really sure what you want to create. We also have an exclusive Facebook group as a, as a benefit where you can share your artwork. And that's always really fun because we get to see different iterations of all of these paintings. I was on there earlier today and somebody completed this painting and they shared their version of it, which was really neat because this lesson isn't out yet. But I always try to post the traceables and the reference photos early so everybody can get the images transferred on canvas and make sure that they have all their materials and do all of that. But she took this initiative and she, she did the painting before the lesson came out and it was so good. It was really, really good. So, little experiences like that are always so much fun. And again, that is a, a perk up over on Patreon. That way, I always try to make it so it's how we, again, financially support the channel. But I also want it to be of great value to you. So, you do get the early posts, material lists. Traceables reference photos, ebooks, Facebook group at one of the tiers, bunch of fun things. Also, seems this talk has gotten us through the majority of the branches, so that's fantastic. I think we should take a bit of a step back and we'll continue to proceed from there. I feel like things look very natural and very balanced, which at this point is really what we're looking for. We don't need anything to pop out too much. We don't need anything to really suck in our attention. That is what occurs kind of towards the end of the painting process. But I really like the base that we've built. That said, something I do want to do while we have our liner brush is create a little bit of a highlight on the side of this tree and potentially branches over here, anything rather large. So we'll just grab some of our titanium white, Mars black, and cerulean blue. Very similar to the highlight pigment that we rendered on this tree over here. And if you have that on your palette, you can just remix to it. But I'll do a little test. I like that, but it's too bright. Though I like it to the point where I'm just going to continue adding it to this branch tree. That's great for texture and defining the edge. That said, now we make it darker. More Mars block, a little bit more, adding it very slowly so we don't overdo it. And now I'm going to go to the larger portions of this tree, make multiple strokes. We can have it get lost 
and the rest of it, the tops of the branches that shoot out can also get a slight highlight, not too much, and you want it to dissipate as it gets smaller. But it's a nice little extra detail to add some realism. Additionally, we can take that and we can incorporate it up here. Don't want to do too much. Don't want to overdo it. But it can also be a way of distinguishing which branches are overlapping other branches. Another one of those heavy focus sections where I need to be a little bit more quiet. There we go. Now, our next step isn't actually working on all of the foliage that we have up here, all of those really nice, brighter, and more saturated oranges. And we're not going to do that because we need to incorporate some of that fall in here on the road. And it makes sense to just kind of sequence it so that the road is painted first, and then those brighter highlights and more prominent leaves in the foreground are rendered towards the end of the lesson. So we're going to put that on hold. The top will look a little bit bare for a little bit longer, but I think it still looks natural. We have a great base to work on top of, and I have a lot of faith we'll get there. That said, again, down to the road. And if you look at the road, you'll probably notice a lot of little detail. The road is actually comprised of a litany of smaller bricks interlocking. Now, this can look fantastic, it can look really great. I personally am going to opt not to paint it in this lesson today. Why is that? Because we already have a lot of detail within all of the fallen foliage, and you can see little pools of water. I'm going to accentuate these because I personally love that as a feature. I feel like it already feels like a really nice, cool, rainy day, and that's something that I want to add to. And I don't want to overdo this area so that it overwhelms the other portions. That said, again, in regards to the uh, exclusive Facebook group that we have for patrons, someone already completed this, as noted, and they did it with the interlocking road, and it looked fabulous. It looked great. You are more than welcome to do it, but I want to take it in a slightly different direction. So again, it's, it's one of those situations where you are more than welcome to follow on along exactly with what I'm doing, or kind of take your own path and alter it however you'd like to, but I thought I'd make note of that before we continue and why I was making the decision to not go ahead and do that. I just want to accentuate a different feature that might overcomplicate it if both are completed. So now, jumping back to the painting, we are of course using the one inch flat headed brush, nice and clean. We will be using a real combination of our titanium white, Mars black, and cerulean blue. We'll start with said cerulean blue. Grab some titanium white, about half of our cerulean blue, and Mars black again, half of our cerulean blue. This should render a semi-desaturated blue, one that will probably work well for the top of the road, going in for a little test. Needs to be more desaturated, so we'll double up our titanium white, and we'll double up our Mars black. Get a good mix. You really don't want small portions to have a little bit more black, a little bit more white, a little bit more blue, because if you do, and you accidentally grab that, you move it onto the canvas, you might end up with something very inconsistent or ruin a softer gradient or blending. With that, I really liked this pigment. It worked quite well on the reference photo, and so we will start delivering it to the canvas. Now we can avoid that middle portion should we want to, or we can go ahead and redraw it. I'm going to do my best to avoid it, but if I have to redraw it, oh, that's okay. I have a lot of pigment here on my brush. We're taking this quite far down, really just using up as 
much paint as I can here because we might as well. We need to switch pigments for our next application and this will just give us a great deal of room to blend with. So, we'll work that down here. I'm not going to blend it to the point where it gets toothy or granular. And I'll show you what I mean. Here, you can see we're really running out of paint and we just have something that's very rough looking. That's not great to blend with. And when you get to that point, blending becomes hard. So we're not going to force that. With it, I'm now going to grab about double the amount of Mars Black that we were previously working with. Move that to the side and start blending it in. Now, we'll go to that corner start working it up. We want a relatively smooth blend, but if it's not perfect, that's also okay, because we are going to have those little pools of water to cover up portions we don't love, and we'll have a lot of foliage. We'll grab more. Head over to the other side and attempt to do so before our previous application dries. If it does dry though, we can always do a wet into dry mix where you just use a little bit more water and you apply the darker pigment over the lighter pigment and just allow it to naturally dissipate as you move farther back onto that lighter pigment. That said, we did not have to do that though we have more blending to do, larger gradients to achieve. So I'm going to look and continue until we get a dark pigment similar to what we have in the greenery, just like that. We'll predominantly do this on the left hand side as you can see. There's more light towards the back and the way it travels will leave the right hand side just a little bit brighter. It is starting to dry and I am going to have to do the wet into dry technique which again isn't an issue. Here my brush is quite damp. I'm blending this over previously dry pigment Grab a little bit more water, wipe off the excess, and that's doing it. It's almost like a glaze at that point. That said, we'll grab more of that dark pigment. This is fully dry, so yet again, wet into dry. Grab a little bit more paint. You can see without the water, it's very granular. But we'll grab some water, wipe off the excess. And just like that, we have a much more natural, smooth blend. Excellent. Grab that dark pigment, head back over here. You can see that I'm doing multiple layers, just slowly building it all up. And I try not to do too much in any one area at a singular point in time because we're using quite a bit of water to do the wet and a dry. And if you use a lot of water, you can kind of take off paint, at least while it's still wet. But if you let it dry, you can go back and add more water and have no issue. That's why we're kind of jumping around to the extent that we are. That said, I do want to clean up this line a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do that. Both sides. We will expand that line. But for now, I think that's certainly the play. We can also go back and brighten up the road in any portion that we feel necessary. And we can just grab our brighter pigment from the top. Watch this. Now, of course, this middle area is also dry, but we can grab a little bit of our mid pigment Make our brush nice and damp. 
and we can just brighten up these back areas, should we want to. Again, you don't have to. There's a lot of personal preference that comes into this. Trying to keep the road relatively dark because we're going to have the lighter leaves on top of it and they'll look a whole lot better with more contrast. That said, we do want it to be natural. So I am bringing some light down. And it's really just going back and forth between the lighter and darker pigments until we have something we really like. And luckily, I'm very close to that. Using a very soft movement with my brush. I'm going to take my pinky finger, ground it on the easel or a dry area of canvas to make these very particular sharp markings. It just takes some of the shake out of the hand when you ground it. It's one of those painting sessions where I kind of skipped dinner because I just got really invested <laughs> and I know we've all been there, but when you don't eat, you can get a little bit shaky. So friendly reminder, do take breaks, do have something to eat, do make sure you are staying hydrated. That is all important, but I think that's really good. Well, I'll just go in with a slightly darker edge one more time. Just make it a little bit more dramatic. And then I think once this is in, I'll be done with this portion of the road. Now for the next step, once our road is fully dry to the touch, we will be switching to the half inch flat headed brush and this one has more of a medium to soft bristle. So we're going to dip that in a little bit of water, wipe off the excess and create more of a yellowed orange. I do still want it to have a hint of orange in there so it's cohesive with all of the foliage that we render. But we'll start with quite a lot of our Naples yellow. We'll grab one fifth that in our burnt sienna, again, a very safe starting ratio. We'll grab about one fifth that in titanium white because we want it to be a nice thick pigment and the titanium white will help with that to a fairly good extent. Though the titanium white, while thickening, will also desaturate it. So I'm going to double up my burnt sienna, reinterject some saturation back into the mix and we'll also grab the smallest amount of Mars Black. And I'm just taking off as much excess as I can. We'll work that in very thoroughly. And now that it's been darkened, we have the opportunity to brighten it should we want some areas to be a little bit brighter. That said, do be careful with the Mars Black and the Naples Yellow. Again, you don't want to get any greens. That's why, in part, we were adding in the Burnt Sienna. But now, I'm actually going to take all of this pigment that I have on my brush, take it off because it can be difficult to render sharp markings when you apply paint with the brush you just mixed with as you can have a lot of excess paint. So I'll just take off that extra paint, make sure the brush is nice and damp, pick up new paint, I'm going to get nice and close to the canvas, take my pinky finger, ground my hand. Doing lots of little strokes here. Pigment is semi-transparent. So I will have to go back and do additional layering, but it's worth the cost. It being wet is worth the cost. So letting me get some really sharp markings.
trying to paint just without moving around the canvas too much so that I don't accidentally move in front of it. But this would be easier from a different angle. Don't feel like you have to be stagnant through the painting process. Often getting up and moving around can open you up to some easier angles. That all create a more relaxed painting process. You can see just how thin this is, but you can also see how it's smaller in the back and then it slowly gets larger towards the foreground. And I try to make it as small as I can in the back, that way I have a lot of opportunity to expand. There we go. I'm going to let this dry. Go in, do probably a second, maybe a third layer. And then together, we'll move on to the next step. You know what? I said that and then I thought, you know what? We will move the camera. I will move around the painting. And I'll show you more of this process of just layering it on, being very careful. We're sticking to a singular side here, as you can see. But I also wanted to move it, as we have, so that you can see just how the painting looks different from a different angle. The lighting is going to have an impact the place in which your painting is in the room is going to change, or the aesthetic of it rather is going to change depending upon that. So when you're selecting your area to paint, take a canvas, move it around the room, see which area is offered the least amount of glare, and consider that. You can also move your light if that's an, oppor if that's an opportunity you have. All of my painting studios that I've ever had <laughs> never have a ceiling light. I don't know why. It's just, <laughs> it hasn't happened yet where I have had one of those. So I always bring in additional lights, which I can move. But I also like to paint with natural light. So often the area in which I paint is determined by the window and just how all of that works. Though so it is a good thing to consider because again, the painting can look very different from different angles, especially when wet. So yet again, here we have the painting from a more proper angle and it's void of reflections. I like that, it's nice and thick, but it's very noticeable just how much this pops in relation to everything else. That is why we wanted to incorporate the orange so that when we go ahead and incorporate all the foliage, this actually matches with something rather than just being too visually pronounced. But with that, I'm going to switch to my liner brush. I'm going to make sure that's nice and damp. And we're going to create a mixture of our Mars Black Titanium White, about an equal mixture of each. So we end up with a mid to darker gray. And then I'll also grab maybe a hint of our Naples Yellow. And we'll use this to create a slight lift in concrete that appears throughout the edges of the road. So there's a little bit of a lifted area which is catching some amount of light. I'm skipping some small portions very intentionally so that it looks like portions of the foliage are reaching out and overlapping it. Just gives us a bit of easy additional realistic dimension. As we get closer to us, these markings should get larger. So I'm pressing with slightly more pressure on my brush. But as you can tell, it's very noticeable within this darker space and it too should have shadow. So, as we get closer to us, we interject more Mars Black. I 
and we will just continue this nice little raised piece. Using a lot of water. which makes it semi-transparent, which will actually be useful here because we'll see that darker pigment through it, especially as it dries, and it won't be too visually prominent. So that actually worked out quite well. You can also make an even darker mixture. And if you want to separate this, so we are doing the, the bricks in the road, but we can add additional details. If you want to separate this and make it individual pieces of concrete, you can work your way through and just create these little breaks in between. I'm not going to do too many. This is just an artistic liberty. It's not in the reference photo, but I thought it would be a fun little addition. And when we go back to our foliage, we can overlap more of this with that. So, so far so good. Next, I think we'll work on our nice little fenced area over here. So I'll get you a bit closer. So for this next step, we will be a little bit closer. It's going to be very detailed. You don't have to do this, by the way, if you don't want to kind of endeavor into a less natural subject within the piece. But I'm going to be using the half inch flat headed brush. I'll start with some Mars black, as we know it needs to be quite dark. I'll grab maybe half that in titanium white and then we'll grab half that in cerulean blue so that it has that nice cool pigment reflecting down on it. Now we want to create a lot of elongated vertical applications. I'm going to start right here on the edge using this brush like so. And then I'm going to work my way back around that backing edge. And I'm going to go back over a lot of those portions and create an additional marking in between. As the farther away it is, the more condensed the pieces will look. That said, definitely need more water on my brush. So I'll take off the paint I had, grab some water, move here. I'm just going to look on the photo. I think we can bring it up to about this point. So here we are. If the base isn't perfectly aligned with all of them, you can go back and reconnect or alternatively a little bit later, we can go in and just cover that area with leaves. Now this application had significantly more water in it than this one, so this is a lot more thin. Which means we need to go in with more pigment, additional layers. I think we'll also make it a little bit darker as we get closer to us and move out of that slightly illuminated area. There we go. Our pigment is mixing with the previous application, making it slightly brighter. But that's good, it's just creating a solid transition. I'm also going to create connective pieces that work their way through both that top and this bottom portion. Now in the photo it doesn't seem that there's a connective piece on the very top but I am considering it. I think what we need to do is take a look at this from a little bit of a distance to determine what we'd really like to do. I'm also going to straighten some of these 
They don't have to be perfectly straight. It does make sense that over time they'd move a little bit or might just not be planted perfectly. But we can straighten them if that is something you'd like to do. So stepping back, there we have our nice little miniature fence and I don't think I want to make it any larger or more prominent. Uh, I want it to be a very small part of a very natural painting, but I will just do that top connective piece in the back as well. Very simple. Nice little addition. And we will have foliage covering a fair portion of this as well. So, all of that is looking good. The next step is heading back up to work on some additional foliage. Now, for that, we're going to need a couple of brushes and I'll get you moved. Now, as we mentioned earlier in the lesson, intertwining different trees is a great way of getting to look really realistic. We did a lot of that in the bottom here. It's time to do so up in this portion. I'm going to do my mixing with the one inch flat. I will start by mixing up a bit of a darker orange. We've obviously um, lost our initial mixture for the darker oranges, but we can definitely recreate one. I'll start with an equal amount of my burnt sienna and my Naples yellow. Of course, Naples yellow will take over. We will double up our burnt sienna so that we move more into that orange than yellow. I'll grab one tenth that Mars Black. It should do quite a lot, as you can see it is. And then we'll grab about one tenth that in our Sapa Green. I haven't worked with that in a little while, but creates this great transition color between our oranges and our greens. Mix that up quite well. Though, while we wanted all of our other mixes to be perfect, if this one has little areas that are a little bit more orange, a little bit more green, that is okay. It'll just be fun little splashes of larger intermixed color, right? Now we switch to the half inch flat, and this one has the stiff bristles, which is how I was able to peel all of those back. Get a minimal amount of paint on this. And I want these to be coming out from partially behind this larger green tree, but also in front of it. So I'll work in between some of our openings, but then we'll also work in front. This means we will have to go on top of portions of our branches. That's okay. We can always paint our branches back on top or leave it that way and just have that fun mix. You can see just how great it looks over the darker pigment. Gets lost a little bit in the backing. That's okay. I think that looks like a fairly good start. Could use a little bit more up here. A little bit up here, just checking the reference photo. And I want a slightly thicker application right in this spot. There we go. Okay, from there, we're going to put that brush down, head back to our one inch flat. We're going to recreate our initial mixture minus the Mars black and minus the green on top of our last pigment. Now this is going to adopt the pigments from our last pigment, but because we have so much new color, it's going to be its own brighter, more orange thing. We'll just mix that about. There we go. Take the extra pigment off, that way my brush doesn't dry with a lot of acrylic on it. Switch over to the half inch flat. B2 
be careful with where we apply this because it will be stark. We can rework a little bit of it down here, make things nice and cohesive. Don't want to do too much of this one. It's just to help these backing areas carry slightly more form and work well with the line that we have at the bottom. I'm not pressing the entirety of my brush into the canvas. I'm looking for specific areas of bristles and then using them to further craft pieces that I know I want. There we go. Oh, that is wonderful. Okay. I've been hesitant to do this just because it can be a little bit tricky getting the mix of the two, but I think we found a good way of going about it. So we have this larger area and then we move up to the left and then we move up to the right. This one's smaller than this one. This is two protruding pieces. This is one, but it's on a kind of an angled block. And here we have a bit of a more organic shape. Don't want to put too much of that orange over towards this side because we don't want to draw the eye over there, but we want enough scattered throughout that it feels natural. We can also incorporate some small portions over on the right hand side in between some of the openings in our tree implies that we have one of these brighter trees behind it, which can be quite nice. See how this took it to something that was far more realistic looking? Again, it's that intertwined effect. I just did a fall lesson and I, I didn't talk about it much and I wish I talked about it more. But that's why we do more fall lessons. It's always new information to pick up, learn and apply. There we go. Lots of nice little taps. Okay, we do need more foliage up in this top area, but before we do that, I want to incorporate some down below. This next portion is going to be done from a bit of a distance so that we can see this in relation to the ground and ensure that we're not overdoing the amount of orange that we scatter throughout here. With that, I don't want to go in with this very bright orange for our first layer. We can build up to it if we want to, but yet again, I'm going to take some Mars Black and some sap green and work both of those into our current orange for a bit more of an earthy green darker mix. There we go. Really going for something subtle to start us off. Back to the half inch. I know that I want quite a bit through here. I know that I want the foreground to have a good portion of it. Rotating my brush. We'll also be painting in little pools of water, but figured we'd get this in first and then we'd re-add some to said pools later on. I'm going to add quite a few right under our fenced area, just as they could and would be collected in that spot. And I'm pressing slightly more pressure into the canvas with my brush as we get closer to us in the foreground. As we get farther away, it's less pressure. And I wait until I have not a great deal of paint on my brush. 
Again, the foreground is where we start and that's where we make the larger markings because leaves will visually appear larger in the foreground. It is only the first layer, so you don't have to cover all of the areas that you want to. It can be significantly more sparse. And I don't want to do too much in the foreground because we have another brush for really accomplishing a lot of that. With that, I'm going to grab my one inch, clean it off just because it does have some acrylic drying on it. Head back over here, remix a nice brighter orange. We're getting much faster on it as we've had quite a bit of practice. Still interjecting a little bit of Mars Black, but not too much. You can see the difference between this pigment and what we were just working with. Switch over to my liner brush. Make sure it's nice and damp. And I'll go in and I'll paint individual little leaves. Predominantly on the top of that texture we just created. That way it looks like we have some layering going on with the leaves. There are enough that they've fallen on top of each other and started to create little piles. This will also give you the opportunity to create very definitive form. That said, we're going to want to work with multiple oranges. So don't feel like you have to cover all of these spots with this singular mix. I do want some that are significantly more burnt sienna heavy. And we're just tapping these throughout. Rotating my brush occasionally so that I get a slightly different marking. As we get closer to us, just like with the other brush, we apply more pressure. As we get farther away, less pressure, smaller markings. There we go. Oh, that looks nice. Okay, still a lot to do, but we're getting there. I'm going to grab burnt sienna and quite a bit of it. Make a warmer variant. This is going to darken it because burnt sienna is just inherently darker than the Naples yellow and the titanium white, therefore the mix we were working with. But it's okay to make it a little bit darker, add some diversity and color in there. Not everything needs to be as bright as the middle of the road. We do want hints of that value elsewhere, just so it doesn't look out of place in the middle. But playing with our colors here is going to be very beneficial. You can overlap some of your previous foliage should you want to, but you can also create new markings. I I'm trying to use not too much water here because I want nice thick applications. And the more you press with your brush, the more you spread out paint, which thins it a little bit. So, because I want to make larger markings, I have to press harder, which thins my applications, which would already be inherently quite thin if we were still working with a lot of water. You can use water, but it means you'll have to go back over a lot of this multiple times. And with this many markings, you might want to avoid that. Just working on all of these small little details, trying to create a good balance 
We will be taking this technique up into the top of the painting. We do need more foliage up there, more thick foliage, more orange foliage. There we go. With that, you also don't have to finish this area now. And I'd almost recommend not doing so, leaving it feeling slightly empty. And we do that very specifically so that we don't force ourselves into applying too much detail into the top area, because this needs to balance what's going on up there. And if that is overdone, that needs to be overdone to balance it. So in these scenarios, it's better to kind of underdo different portions and then come back later once you have a better feel for all of your balancing. That said, I still feel like it's relatively bare. We have this larger motion that ties both sides of the street together, which I like a lot, but I think that it is too prominent and singular in large movements. to the point where it looks intentional. And that is how we break realism. So we need to make it look unintentional. How do we do that? We go into the rest of the painting, different areas of the road, and can even be up here, and we just scatter more of our foliage so that this is less distracting. Or we can create other little pocket areas that are of not similar shape, but similar dominance. And that can help a lot. That's kind of what we're doing through here. We have a bit of a winding effect. And I like that. It, like the road, acts as a delivery, visually. We have a lot of leading lines not too simple, it's not too complicated. I also admittedly just love painting leaves on the ground in water. Always such a pleasure. I'm going to incorporate a couple that got stuck on the top of the mini fence. And they can even be in between some of the bars. There we go. We can use some of these to touch up perhaps thin areas that we have at the top. Though do be careful because these previous markings were all quite small and what you make with the liner brush, while it is a very small brush, will be larger than what we previously achieved with the half inch, very disheveled brush. Okay, let's go a little bit brighter again. Half and half with a little bit of thickness. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Stands out, but fits in. Great highlight pigment. Being very careful with this one, as it is quite bright. Don't want to overdo it. And if you find that you make too many of those really bright applications, you can always go over them with one of your previous darker, more orange mixes. With that, I think we've done a healthy amount at the bottom here. And it's time to move back up in the painting. 
So now yet again, we head back up in our painting. I'm going to start with a medium orange. So not as dark as this, but not as bright as that. We'll probably end up using a fair sum of the burnt sienna. Small hint of the sap green, small hint of the Mars black, and that right there looks like a very healthy first mix. So I'm actually going to clean that one inch brush just because, again, it is starting to dry with quite a lot of pigment on it, and we can always remix a bit in a little bit. Now we'll switch over to our nice little liner brush. Grab a thick amount of that paint. Actually, we'll take off quite a bit of water. We do want this to be a thick application. And we're going to start placing on all of the pieces of foliage that are close enough to us that we can actually see individual little leaves. Now, I look over at the photo, I can tell that there's an area here that has quite a number of them. This is done with a bit of a tap and a drag. There isn't actually a painted branch here. You could go and paint the branches where you want all of these to be, but you won't really see it because it'll be very dark. And you could go back and actually paint it after you have these established, but I didn't want to paint branches initially because I didn't want to lock myself in to a specific area. I wanted a bit more freedom with painting my leaves because they're very bright and stark. And we're going to get a much better idea of how it all look by actually painting them rather than painting a guide for where they should be with a branch, right? There we go. Nice and thick applications. We'll grab some of this mixture, head back over here going to look where that is. I'm going to go down slightly and we'll create a new cluster following a larger branch with miniature branches where these can kind of come off of. And we'll have a bit of a lift in the branch. Some smaller pieces as well. We won't avoid the edge. Some of the leaves will be half cut off by the edge. That's also important for building depth in general. There we go. I think we'll also splash some of this up through here. Then we'll also be painting darker orange leaves into these areas as well. want most of these to be kind of dangling downwards. Like that. There we are. And we can do this all scattered throughout, but there's a larger area that is going to be right here, and I'm actively avoiding that because I want to do so with a bit more of an orange mix. This one has a little bit too much yellow for that spot. There we go. Okay, so we have a couple of applications started. Let's make this more orange. Lot of burnt sienna in the mix. Just like so. A little bit more of that Naples yellow. Again, doesn't have to be a perfect mix here. If your leaves change color slightly, it will actually just look nice and natural. Switching back. And for this section, I'm going to start off by painting it 
with the same camera angle, but once we've established the general area, I'll bring you closer just so you can see some of the actual close-up technique. As these are larger than any of our previously applied leaves or foliage. There we go. We're progressively trying to make them larger as we move into the foreground. And nothing is as in the foreground as these branches. With that, I think you have a good idea of our general area. So we'll get you a little bit closer. So with these, we we'll start by grabbing quite a lot of paint. You can probably see that on the brush. And I like to create these through multiple strokes. I like the leaves generally at the start to be a little bit smaller, to get larger in the middle, and then to get smaller again towards the other end. So we're working with two curved applications, but they're not always falling down. Sometimes they'll be working their way upwards, depending upon a little gust of breeze, gust of wind. We're working them predominantly all in this general section so that it doesn't become overwhelming in the piece. We do occasionally need to grab some level of water so that we can continue rendering sharp applications, but I'm keeping that to be lesser than normal. There we go. We will grab more of that pigment, perhaps work some of it down into this opening. We'll make these slightly smaller, imply that they're pushed back. And we can incorporate a little bit of this color down into these as well. That way, this and this and this all feel cohesive. Don't want to do too much here. Don't want it to become overcomplicated. It's easier to add than it is to take away. Going over a couple of these applications multiple times to thicken them up. We are in the true foreground, so we don't really want many transparent areas or layers. also incorporate these onto these branches as they are very close but again we will want a bit of a darker mix for a lot of this as well just because these are going to be backlit to a degree and I'll throw a couple not many of these applications over here. Again, just keep those colors throughout the piece. We can also have a smaller little batch up top. Lots of jumping around, working to find that proper balance. This will be a lot smaller than this one. Now we'll take another couple of steps back and continue balancing. I can tell that I want some larger applications through here. Not too many, but enough to show that this foliage is moving its way forward. I also want some of these oranges down here. 
we'll just go over previously applied areas that we feel could be a little bit thicker, a little bit more orange. So far so good. Frequently moving myself backwards so that I can get a better feel for the painting. That said, we still need to add our wet road elements into this. Oh my, I think it just became quite cloudy. I'm not sure if it got darker on video, but certainly did in this room. Which, again, is always a, actually a good thing. Might seem annoying in the moment, but it does show you what your painting will look like on cloudy days as well as sunny days if you are painting with natural light. There we go. Like that. Again, if we overdo it in the bottom, we can cover up portions with water, little pools, but we do want to be relatively careful. There we go. I think we'll hop back up here for a second. Into this section. This is probably the only part of the painting where I actually painted the leaves directly on top of uh, branches just because it's the only place close enough that you'd really see the branches well enough to articulate that. Here I'll go back in with a slightly brighter yellowish orange to diversify this foliage. Something we are constantly working to do. I think that actually made a really big difference. Not covering up all of them, just select pieces. And it worked really well over here, so we'll work it over here. Down here. Over here. And perhaps even on the road. Starting to concentrate and get a little bit quieter. Apologies for that. I do try to talk through the entirety of these just so that I can give you as much information as I possibly can. But right now I'm kind of just scanning the painting taking those steps back and incorporating where it's best applied. Really right now, just trying to switch up the oranges and yellows in different spots. Trying to overlap different subjects so that they look natural. Good. Really good. Okay, let's get you a little bit closer and we'll do some of the darker foliage up towards the top. So, up here, as I noted, a lot of these leaves are going to be backlit. So the light is moving through them, which can do one of two things. The first, it can illuminate them, make them a lot brighter. That light kind of fills up that object. Alternatively, if said object, leaf, is still very thick, then the light won't be able to pierce through and it'll be darker, so you'll get a shadow. And you'll get a mix of the two depending upon the age, uh, type of leaf, all of that. So with that, we're going to grab a little bit of our green, about half that in our orange, which we still have, about an equal mixture of Mars Black 
and an equal mixture of titanium white. Then we'll head up here and we'll create some nice little dark silhouetted leaves. If you have these with a bit more of that orange in them, it will look like they are simply silhouetted. Or you can have a slightly more green heavy mix as I do here. And that could also be interpreted as actual green leaves, which we haven't painted in the foreground. And I'm not going to with the exception of the potential interpretation of these. Because I don't want to overcomplicate it. I think we have a nice balance. And I think this will be far more than enough. There we go. Now I'll head back down towards the bottom of the road and we'll start incorporating all of the water I keep talking about. So for this, we're going to have a little bit of that blue light reflecting into it. I'll create a new spot on my palette. So cerulean blue, about half that Mars black, a quarter of that titanium white. And this should create a nice thick medium to dark blue. Now, I'm going to start by cutting off the road. As I can see that's in the reference photo, and you know what, I can already tell that's not dark enough. So let's double up our Mars Black. Needs to be darker than the actual road. There we go, okay. We'll cut a line into this. We'll have another little pool over here. We'll have it really expand and then get larger as we wrap the edge right before that lip that we painted. Now we can take this and interwind it with a lot of our previously painted foliage, or we can just cover it up and then paint more foliage on top. But the idea here is that we just have a little bit of water making this more interesting, further adding to the atmosphere of the painting. Here we can have a little bit under there. There should be some larger pooling areas that I can kind of connect to out more so into the middle of the road, like this. And then if we avoid some leaves, it'll look like those leaves are floating within that section of water, which can be really nice. Okay, let's Add another one over here. And I think we actually need more paint. Mars black, cerulean blue, titanium white, double our Mars black, and make it nice and wet. Can be semi-transparent. If leaves show through it, really isn't an issue. It'll just look like they're slightly submerged and create additional depth for you. There we go. Finding little patches, little divots in the road will collect water. And those divots can really be just about anywhere. Something else I want to do while we're here is add a little bit more of a blue highlight to the back of our road. 
So we'll grab cerulean blue, titanium white, equal mixtures, blend that into the darker mix that we have until we have something that's slightly brighter than what we have at the back of our road. I think we'll add more titanium white. We'll avoid a lot of that foliage and we'll just give it a nice little sheen so that it looks like it was recently rained on and wet. These areas aren't to the point of pooling, but they are a little more prominent. There we go. A little bit of finger painting for our blend. So now we'll take a step back, grab that liner brush, some Mars black, about half that cerulean blue, third of that titanium white, mix up a nice dark branch color like what we previously used. And we can continue adding to those. This is something that I didn't want to do initially. I didn't want to overdo it because I didn't know how much detail we have in the road, how much detail we have in the foliage. And this is something that I always like incorporating a lot of, but it's easy to overdo and again, kind of force ourselves to do more with foliage and things that we might want to not expand on. So here, we just waited a little while, got to that point where we saw a new, you know what? We can go back in, add that detail, overlap some of our foliage because we've been applying a lot of foliage on top of branches and everything, where now we have the opportunity to reinterject branches on top of foliage further build those layers and get something really nice, full of detail. But this is essentially a section of little additions and finishing touches. Finishing touches are going to look different for everyone. We all have different elements that we'll probably want to go back to, touch up, add to, work reductively. Maybe you want to take away some leaves. Maybe you want to kind of work over some branches. All different things are acceptable and I think this is where a lot of the paintings become really interesting and fun where you can take them in your own direction should you want to or maybe you're just at a place where you are really happy with it and you can actually put the brush down but the first thing I personally wanted to do was go back in and add some smaller branches I'm trying to do this from a bit of a distance so that I have a really good view of the painting as a whole but with that I also wanted to say a big thank you to all of you for being here, for spending this time with me today. I always think it's really wonderful that people are out there still just so interested in acrylic painting and learning all of these little things. I do hope you feel like you learned a lot, that you are excited to go out and create your own piece. And if you started already, that it's going really, really well. I also hope that you feel like you took ideas and lessons out of this that won't simply apply to this painting, but additional pieces in the future. That's always really the goal with these. And again, big thank you for being here. If you are part of the 13% that normally makes it to the end of the video, you can use the keyword in the description of... Oh, what will we go with today? I always like to do one word, just a subtle little uh, badge of honor that you can use in the comment section to know that you made it towards the end. You are one of the few and all know and everybody else who also made it here will know as well. But, hmm, you know what? Let me sit with that for a second. Let me sit with that. A couple things came to mind, but they were all, admittedly, things that we've previously used before. I believe the first one was brisk. But we've definitely used that. Hmm. Oh! Stroll. Today's word will be stroll. 
as if we're taking a nice little stroll down the walkway. I think that's fitting, it's subtle. You can incorporate that into a sentence or you can just leave it as a singular word. But regardless, I do look forward to seeing who's made it this far in the lesson. I'd like to say again a big, big thank you to everybody up over on Patreon for directly making lessons like this happen. Again, if it wasn't for you, I'd probably have to put 30 ads on the videos and probably make, you know, 10, 15 minute videos, speed paintings, the things that typically do really well with views, but we don't have to do that. We can spend two plus hours working on a complicated painting because of you and your support. So big thank you for directly making this happen. I feel very lucky to be able to teach and make these and work on them with you for a living. And if you are new to the channel and you'd like to help support, you can do so up over on Patreon. There's a link in the description. There you can get the traceables to help with the drawings, the reference photos to test your colors directly on. You can also get uh, access to our exclusive Facebook group where everybody shares their renditions, all of the eBooks, including again, acrylics for beginners and a bunch of eBooks full of additional traceables. And I'm also starting to try to post all of the material lists before the lessons actually go up, as well as the traceable. That way you can get it transferred to Canvas early, and you can also pick up all of the materials that you'll need for the next lesson. So we're trying that. I'm not perfect at it. <laughs> Sometimes I uh, do decide to change which lesson is coming out. So again, uh, no promises that that will always be perfect, but I think we're, we've been doing pretty well with it. We have a good track record the last couple of weeks. And I think that it's getting easier to uh, kind of pre-plan like that. Sometimes inspiration just kind of takes hold and I go in a different direction, but we've been doing well and I am trying to incorporate it. So if you're interested in any of that, do go ahead and check it out. Thank you to everybody who's up there. Thank you to everybody who's just watching right now, regardless of if you can or can't support on Patreon. I do appreciate you being a part of our community. And with that, I'm very happy with the painting. I'm very, very happy. I think this is the fall piece that I really wanted to make. And it's wonderful that we were able to do it together. So thank you. Remember to stay hydrated and have some food in the process. Also, as always, above all, stay creative.